Good morning and welcome to Wholesome Roots. Today I'm going to show you how to make elderberry syrup in an instant pot. It makes it go much faster than my previous recipe where I showed you how to do it on the stove top. So the recipe itself is pretty much the same. You're going to use one cup of dried elderberries. These are organic elderberries I had to order off of Amazon because the birds eat most of our elderberries from the trees. One cup of local raw organic honey, four cups or a quart of distilled water or any type of non-chlorinated water is fine too. Ginger, I have a lot more ginger here than most recipes call for. Most recipes call for an inch or two of chopped ginger. I like a lot more ginger in mine because we love ginger. And then a tablespoon of cinnamon and a half a teaspoon of cloves. So this is going to be the same basic recipe as my previous one, but I will be doing it in the Instant Pot. Elderberries are very good for you to help support your immune system. They're full of vitamins and antioxidants. The ginger is good, the cinnamon and the cloves are all really good for you for those reasons. And they're really going to help boost your immune system. And it's a great way to get kids to take something that's going to help boost their immune system. My little ones beg for elderberry syrup every day and they love to drink it. One of the nice parts about this recipe is you can alter it. You don't have to use as much ginger, cinnamon, and cloves. In fact, if you don't like one of those, leave it out. The most important ingredient in this is the elderberries. Another thing I like to add to it, if I um, have access to organic citrus. Um, I don't like to use non-organic citrus in this because obviously this is an immune boosting organic ingredients already, but because use the peel. The peel has so much vitamin C and nutrients in it. So I'll just cut up half of a lemon or half of an orange or whatever it is that the store has available as an organic option and add it to this as well. So feel free to alter the recipe to your liking, but make sure you use the right amount of elderberries so that you're getting that full immune boosting power from those berries. So you add all of the ingredients except for the honey and you stir them in and then you put them in your instant pot. So I put the insert into the instant pot, put the lid on, lock it, close the vent valve, you click pressure cook. and you put it on less. It's high pressure, but we're putting it on less if your Instant Pot has that option. And we're gonna bump it up to 10 minutes. So, pressure cook for 10 minutes on high pressure. And you walk away and you don't worry about it for a little while. Easy as that. So that's it. I walk away from the Instant Pot, let it do its thing. I don't have to stand over the stove stirring for 45 minutes. So this first step is the 10 minutes to make it cook. And after we release the pressure on the Instant Pot and take the lid off, we are gonna change the setting and we're gonna cook it for 10 more minutes on saute. And at that point, you will wanna kinda keep an eye on it, but most of the time you don't have to stir it at all. Just let it simmer away so that it reduces. All right, it is done. It just beeped and um, the nice thing about Instant Pots is it starts putting it on the warm mode. So that's one minute of being warm. So, hasn't been a full minute, but... Release that steam, and when that's done releasing, I can take the lid off. And there it is. Beautiful, dark, rich brew. Now many of the recipes I saw online actually said to strain it 
at this point and add your honey. That is not a good idea. Not for a concentrated syrup. So instead of straining it at this point, we are actually going to put it on saute. I have to cancel first. Then saute. Perfect. And on saute, we're just going to do it for 10 minutes. Manually, put it down to 10 minutes. So what this is doing is it's kind of doing what we did with the stovetop recipe where it's allowing it to reduce. So it's only going to take about 10 minutes for it to reduce the proper amount. Something I like to do is while it's cooking, I like to mash those berries. Get all that juicy, hydrated goodness out of them. The dehydrated berries especially because they get shriveled up when they're dried and they kind of stay in a shriveled shape even after they absorb the moisture. So it's good to squish that juicy flesh back out into the syrup that you're making. So it's always a good idea to mash it up while it's cooking. You can do the mashing afterwards, but it makes sense to me just to go ahead and make that part of my stirring. One of the great advantages of making this in an instant pot is I don't have to stay there stirring. I can if I want to, and I kind of keep an eye on it, but the instant pot's gonna change over to warm when the 10 minutes is up. So you're not gonna burn it, and it's not gonna get scorched. So that's perfect, especially if you're a busy mom like me and constantly trying to do a million things at once. <laughs> So now it has finished its time and I'm going to go ahead and pour it through a strainer. You can pour it through a cheesecloth if you want. Some people don't like the way the powdered cinnamon and clove texture is. So they like to get a finer strain using a cheesecloth. I just use a fine mesh strainer and it works fine for me. Alright, I cannot even tell you how good my house smells right now. And I apologize for my beat up looking strainer. It apparently has been stepped on since the last time I used it. So I've actually got a strainer under it too, just in case anything plops out. If I can't hold it straight enough. Look at that beautiful, beautiful goodness. Oh, this, I could just scoop it up and eat it with a spoon almost. Although you really can't. So what I do at this step is I press it, press it through the strainer, getting all the juice out and making sure I get every last bit of that good stuff. Then I'm going to have to let it cool off. You're going to want to make sure that you let it cool down to 115 degrees or less before you add your honey. Honey is a raw living ingredient, so you don't want to kill it with high temperatures. So 115 degrees or less. So just go ahead and let it get to room temperature usually is what I do. And just like that, we have all this beautiful elderberry juice. Gonna let it cool off and then add our honey. When you're finished straining your elderberries, you can take all the elderberry pulp that's left behind in the strainer and you can compost it. If you have chickens, you can feed it to your chickens and it's going to give them extra immune boosting powers. So definitely don't let that go to waste. I'm even considering adding it to a second ferment kombucha. Mmm, because there's still a lot of good juice left in it. Why not? Some of you may have noticed that the volume that I was just straining looked like a lot more than the recipe I had given you. That's because I doubled the recipe. That's one of the things that I love about the Instant Pot is that I have plenty of room where I can double the recipe and I'm able to share it with my friends who need some elderberry syrup as well. The easiest step is left is just 
mixing it with honey and putting it into a jar and storing it in your refrigerator. Then every day during flu season, you should be taking a teaspoon per adult at least. I tend to give a bit more um, as an extra boost. So when the kids get a dose, I usually give them about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. And then for us, it's anywhere from a teaspoon to a tablespoon. When we had the flu, and by the way, we only got the flu when we ran out of elderberry syrup and couldn't buy more. So I am a strong believer in how well it works because whenever we've been taking our elderberry syrup, we stay very healthy. But as soon as we ran out, <laughs> That is when we got really sick. So I am very strict about making sure we don't run out. So when we are sick, we actually take a shot glass of elderberry syrup as often as we can think of it every couple of hours. I mean, it's 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 so good for you and it's so healthy. And I, you know, you do have to be careful with kids and with people with other certain conditions. I'm not here to give any medical advice. I am just here to show you how to make this. So please do your research. Make sure that you know what you're using and how it will affect your body. Everybody is different and everybody reacts differently to different things. So if you know you're allergic to cinnamon, don't use cinnamon. <laughs> but please enjoy this recipe, share it with your family, share it with your friends. I know I've had a million people in the last month ask me how to make elderberry syrup because of the bad flu that we've been suffering from across the country this year. So please get this recipe made and start treating your family every day to help prevent that flu from coming into your family. Thank you for watching. Please like and share. Subscribe if you haven't already for more great videos. And we'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.